Good morning, good morning, good people. Manze, I am so psyched up to be in this place and I hope you are and I'm so happy that you are able to join us today. This is the Harvest Conference 2020. Woo! Manze, this has been awesome, Manze. We've been waiting for this for a long time since the last Harvest Conference to this. So we'll be talking about focusing on Christ. That is our theme from the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. And today we are going to focus on an attribute that we see in Christ Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? So I'm going to take you through this attribute that I took upon myself. But before going deep to it, I'm going to, we're going to look at some of the people that also had this attribute in the Bible that we, talk, that we read about. So the attribute is excellence. We see excellence being portrayed by Christ in everything that he does. We can see how he portrays this in his communication with the Pharisees. We can see how he portrays this in his teaching to the disciples. We can see how he portrays this in his daily prayer sessions. Each and every single day we see him going somewhere, taking himself apart from his people and going to pray just to have a long time with his father. And we can also see him learning in excellence. Where do I get this? I get this from the book of Luke, where we are told that Christ himself, the baby, the baby Jesus, now, now before he was called Christ, the baby Jesus himself, he is left in the temple in Jerusalem. He decides to remain behind. After the parents left, they looked for him for three days and on the fourth day is when they got him. And we see, and it's written so well in the book of Luke that we are told that Christ, that Jesus, the child, was listening and asking questions to the teachers of the law. That is something really profound because we see in the, in the Bible still we are told about how Paul was saying that when he was a child, he spoke like a child, he thought like a child, but we see Christ, him listening first, meaning that actually he had to listen so that he can think and then he can speak. So we see excellence portrayed at such a tender age. And that is something that we need to understand more, more and read more and see more about Christ and we can know that for certain and for sure that Christ was able to do all these great things that he was able to do because of a a portion of excellence that was in him. And so we are going to go on and look at some of the other examples. People like Daniel. We can see this in the book of Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Allow me to read. And it says, Then this Daniel distinguished himself above governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought of setting him over the whole realm. We know about this story of Daniel. Daniel has ha, worked with three kings. Like you can imagine, gen, like a, a king comes and overthrows another king and still Daniel is placed at higher place. Like you can imagine. And we, if we could like go back a bit on the story of Daniel, we see King Nebuchadnezzar telling, giving an advice and is give, giving a word that may you go to the people of Israel where we, they, are, they were kept in captivity and, they are, and, he's and he tells them, bring me these people who have these criteria. And Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were the only people that met the criteria that the king gave. You can imagine the level of excellence these people had, these people portrayed. And we, now we can see Daniel, we are told that he was good in the things of the world and in the things of God. Like there's a place, there's, a, there's some excellence that is seen in this thing. There's an excellence that is seen in, this, in, in the life of, of Daniel. Another person that we see is Paul. Now that we are focusing on the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse, 14, the first, verse 13 and 14, we see that Paul decides that I will not look on the things that are behind me. I will leave them and I will press on. And that's exactly what you're talking about today. We want to see how we can also leave the things that we think or the cultures that have placed things on our head, whatever we hear, whatever we have gone through, leave them alone and press on. Because God has a lot that he wants you to see. And the best way to see this thing is by you walking in excellence. Like how good is it? I will tell you we will build up from the book of Proverbs. Now in the book of Proverbs we are told about the fear, Proverbs chapter 9 verse 10 it says for the fear of the Lord brings wisdom and the knowledge of the most high is understanding. Now I want to tell you something. For you to know something, for you to be good at something, first of all you have to know something. For instance, if you do not know uh, something, if you do not know anything, it means first of all you do not know about it first. Like you are, the, 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 your memory is blank about a, a particular matter. For instance, if you want to know about God, like the Bible is so clear as it says that 
first of all, it is the fear that brings the wisdom. But for you to get the knowledge, you have to know about the person. If I want to know maybe about maybe a friend of mine, I will have to spend more time so that I can know them. And by me knowing them, I get to get the understanding about it. So you can imagine that it all starts there. So if you are tackling about excellence, it has to start from a place that we know what exactly excellence is. And we see excellence, excellence being portrayed by Christ. We see excellence being portrayed by also the people who, who came before Christ. And these are the things that we are supposed to know and go deeper into the word. We need to understand that even as the book in the book of Romans chapter 15 as it says that the people of the past, the things of the past were written so that they can give us encouragement and patience. So we need to understand how can we then attain this excellence. And we can, we, we can go through some of the scriptures like we see some examples in Paul. Uh, allow me to take you to the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 8. For it says, Yes, indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Now, here Paul is talking about he, that he has, kept, he has thrown everything else and he, he counts them as rubbish just for the excellence of the knowledge of God. Now, he, he is portraying excellence in knowing God, meaning that if he gets, like how we have, we've just talked about in the book of Proverbs chapter, from, from the book of Proverbs chapter 9, that he, now, now, now it is about you getting the knowledge of the most High that you'll get the understanding. Now here we see Paul portraying excellence in the knowledge of Christ, meaning that he wants to know more about Christ. And that's why we can, we keep on uh, talking about Paul each and every single time because he had the understanding, he had the knowledge about Christ because it comes from time. Because when you keep on interacting with the word of God, now the understanding becomes better and better. And the wisdom is even sh shown more because with wisdom now, is the in wisdom you can be able to apply the knowledge that you have. You can only be termed a wise man by the knowledge that you apply. So we need to we need to apply this in our lives, that we need to be excellent just as Christ was. We are told to, that the, the, the body, we are told about everything in the, in the world, that we need to do everything according to how Christ did. Like we see the, about the, seven, the fivefold ministries that God, Christ brought them to present them to us so that we could be for the edification of the church. Now you can imagine that even unto our lives, that's the same, same thing that we are supposed to apply. So I thank you for every single thing that we have done. And even as we continue, I want you to know that we are supposed to apply excellence in every single thing that we do. There's something we are told as believers, and I want us to encourage ourselves with these words. Uh, if you could just allow me, we will go together into the book in the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 23, this is exactly what the word of God tells us from the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 23. This applies to everyone. It says, and whatever you do, do it heartily as the Lord and as, as, as to the Lord and not to men. Uh, in NIV version says, what, whatever you do, work it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human Masters, as you do things for God, you have to do things. Umejitolea, umejituma, umejituma kabisa. Do it with excellence. Don't just do it because you just want to do something. Do something because you want to do something and be good at it. Because you are told in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 that we are workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus. And there is a w the, this, this road was already set beforehand. It was already ordained for us to walk in. So do it with excellence because God has equipped you with everything that you do need. And there is something that will set you apart. And this is something that I, I, I want us to focus in the book of Proverbs. Th these are the things that are going to set you apart. The book of Proverbs chapter 25, verse 4. Va verse, verse 4, this is exactly what it says. Remove the dross from the silver, and the silversmith can produce a vessel. There is no way a silversmith, now the dross means it's impurities. That is exactly what dross means. You, can, you cannot have something good, like it cannot be pl placed on on a place where you sell it, it cannot go to the shop if it has impurities. It has to be worked on so that it can be sold, so that it can, it can go to the place of being sold. Now we have to understand that we are supposed to do things. And in order for you to remove these impurities, there is a portion of excellence that you have to 
to apply in your life. There is something that you need to do with your life. You need to focus on yourself. And this time, <laughs> and this time things are better because we are focusing on Christ. We are supposed to focus on Christ. And Christ will help you because he did it. We are told in the book of Hebrews that he has gone this path before us. So you can imagine that we already have someone who has the experience. Every single thing that we go through, he has gone through even more. Now we can go through, we can walk with Christ and we can be able to go past all these things. And this dross and all these impurities will be taken away. Now that is walking in excellence. By focusing our eyes on Christ, we need to continue moving on and soldiering on without stopping. Pressing on in every single thing that we do in our lives. No, no, no. Do not stop there. Not, do, not hear, do not let the, the opinions of people stop you. Your father has a lot for you. Your father has a lot, a lot in store for you. So you need to keep on reading as we if you can just go back to exactly what I said in the book of Proverbs now the, for you to be good at this thing and hear me out for you to be good at this work to be good at everything that you need to be that everything that you want to do in this life you have to have the knowledge first it all begins with knowledge so in your knowledge do it excellently do it excellently. I'm going to finish with some of the scriptures that I'm going to read here, and I really hope that it's going to bless you. And uh, if you could just go with me in the book of Timothy, Second Timothy, Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Uh, here's what the word of the Lord tells us. It tells us this. Do, this is Timothy being talked, this is Paul talking to Timothy, and he, he instructs him this. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. I want us to read in NKJV version. This is exactly what it says. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Wow. Just imagine, we are called to be excellent in everything that we do. But remember, you don't need to do it alone. You will get tired. It will overwhelm you if you do it alone. There is somebody who wants to help you in this task. And I'm going to finish with just one scripture. A scripture that I love, that comes from the book of Philippians chapter 4. And I know that this is a scripture that we have really interacted with for a long time. But I just want to show you the power of excellence in everything that we do. How even the Bible tells us on how we need to focus more on excellence in each and every single thing in our life. This is exactly what it says. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or of praiseworthy, think about such things. Now we've even instructed on how, on, on the things that we need to think about. And if you could just merge these scriptures with one, if maybe we could say that Romans chapter 12 verse 2 was a precursor to this scripture, then it will really make sense. Because the Bible says that do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve that which is the perfect pleasing will of God. Now imagine we have been told to renew our mind and, and Paul tells us in the book of Philippians these are the things that you need to think about. And verse 9 says this, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Just imagine. These are the words that we've been told. So remember to always focus on Christ and then you shall stand victorious and you shall stand excellently in everything that you do, walking in every single path of your life in excellence. So my dear brothers and my dear sisters, I'm so happy that you're in this journey together because right now we can push each other. Do not stop there. We need to be excellent just as Christ was in everything that we do. In our devotion, in our mental life, in our physical life, in our mental, in our spiritual life, every single area of your life, you have to be excellent. And the, 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 the the good thing is you don't really have to do it alone. You have somebody who is there with you. The Holy Spirit is with you each and every single day. And Christ has gone before you. You can read his word. And then by you getting the knowledge, you can get the understanding of the word. 
Thank you. I thank you for this time and everything that you have done. For my name is James Kimani, and I'm happy that I was be I was your host today. Thanks and w thanks. Uh, thank you so much for everything that you have done. Let's pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, I come before you this day with thanksgiving in our hearts. We glorify your name, Father God, for the word that you have given us. And we pray, dear Lord God Almighty, that it shall stay in our hearts, dear Lord God Almighty. That nothing, Father, shall that we have said, that you have talked to us, dear Lord, this particular morning, Father, that shall go wa to waste, dear Lord God Almighty, Father. For we do know, dear Lord, that we stand, Father God, in a safe place where you are, dear Lord. We are safe, Father. For you say, dear Lord, that you are faithful to your words, Father God that every single thing that you had promised, Father God, from the very first time to where we are right now, nothing, absolutely nothing can go against it. Even for the, the situation, the current situation that we are in, dear Lord, Father, we know, Father God, that you are neither infected, neither you are affected, Father God, and then your promises shall stand forever, dear Lord. Father, I pray, dear Lord, that we shall apply excellence in everything that we need, Father God, because you are an excellent Father, and you are ready to teach us, dear Lord God Almighty. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank Thank you for everything that you have done for us, dear Lord God Almighty. Even as we continue in this journey, let us always remember that we have a friend, that we have a father, that we have a helper who is always there, available 24-7. You never miss your classes. You never miss each and any lesson and lectures that you teach, Father. So let us always be attentive. May you help us and may you guide us. For it's the mighty name of Jesus. I do pray trusting and believing in your holy name. God loves you and so do I.